It's my pleasure to be here. It's always an honor to talk about the Rotary Foundation. It is one of the areas that I'm very, very passionate about because it allows us to do so much. And so uh, I thank uh, Christine for inviting me to speak uh, with your club today and look forward to hopefully passing on some new informa information to those people that aren't familiar with the foundation and new information to even those of you that are very familiar and have been supportive of the foundation all along. So we'll uh, start by reviewing the mission. Let's see if I can get to the next slide. The foundation is 106 years old. Uh, it has been around for a very long time. Uh, there is uh, the lofty wording about the mission of the Rotary Foundation, which is wonderful. At the end of the day, the Rotary Foundation is there to help you to do projects that you are passionate about. And so the mission, all the words that are up there really boil down to how can we help you to work with the things that you are passionate about, the things that you want to accomplish, the places that you want to improve right here in your community and around the globe. So that's the mission. We all uh, work on, of course, the areas of focus. There's got to be a better way to do this. And I just share these with you because uh, I think it's a good refresher for us to take a look at what we can do. And I think most of you that have been in Rotary for a while understand that there are seven areas of focus. Um, they are not just areas of focus. They really are areas that have been selected by the Rotary Foundation as being the areas of greatest need around the globe. So uh, when we look at them, I don't know that anyone in here can dispute the fact that peace and building peace around the globe is an important piece when we see what's going on. And so taking a look at all of the different areas, we achieve peace in a number of different ways. I, I actually had a, a, not an argument, but just a discussion with someone about concepts of peace. And so his concept of peace was to deal with nuclear disarmament, which certainly will contribute to peace. And my concept of peace is that we need to feed the hungry because we can't let people get to the point where they feel that the only alternative they have is to press the button on the nuclear bomb. And so if we deal with the front end of it and other people deal with the back end of it, I think we all accomplish the same thing. And so this, this I think, is uh, just a good reflection of, of what we're all about and uh, what the foundation looks after. I also like to brag about the foundation just because I think we need to, but it is recognized around the globe as an organization with outstanding performance. It's recognized as an organization that exercises stewardship over the money. So stewardship, we sort of, again, think about the big word, but what I think about is when I donate my money to the Rotary Foundation, I want to make sure that that money that I donated out of my bank account is going to be looked after in the way that I want it to be looked after, that it's going to be used for the purpose that I want it to be used. And so that stewardship that they exercise over our funds um, globally is recognized not just by some of us Rotarians, but also by the world. And so the, the, uh, it's been rated for 14 consecutive years as one of the top charities in the United States, top charities around the world. Um, it is what allows us to actually form a lot of the partnerships that we have. And so that's, that's an important factor. What happens with the Rotary Foundation is one, we, we spend more of the money on projects and we're allowed or able to do that because of the unique funding model that we have. That's called the SHARE program. What happens is we send our money to the Rotary Foundation. They keep it for three years. They use the interest to deal with some of the administrative costs so that we don't have to spend your donated dollar towards projects on administration. And so that is what's allowed us to use as much as possible uh, for the four projects for doing things um, around the globe. And so through the SHARE program, three years later, all of the money comes back to where it was donated from. And it comes in various pockets. And so it allows us to use the money as we see fit. It's our choice how we want to use that money. But it does come back to us and it does allow us to actually use those funds in the way that we want. So we talked about our passion earlier and, and that's what it's there to support. How the money was spent last year. So if we look at what was donated, uh, this is just some, it does not include everything that uh, Rotary spent money on. 
But you can see the Polio Plus program. We are uh, going to eradicate polio. That is the goal, that's been the goal, and I think we're gonna keep working at that until we get that finished. Uh, global grants, um, again, those are projects that happen all around the globe, and I'm happy to say that there is a global grant that's happening right here in Canada on two reserves in Saskatchewan. So it's not just possible for us to do a global grant elsewhere. If there's a community area that you need to look after here, it is possible to do partnerships and to have a global grant happen right here. And so there are ways to do that, but you can see that that's uh, where, again, the money is spent. Again, this money is spent at the direction of the clubs. So those $65 million that were spent on global grants were because clubs around the world said, I want to do a project in Guatemala. I want to do a project wherever that might, I want to do a project in Saskatchewan. I want to do a project in whatever part of the world. Uh, I know that we work in, in Afghanistan, we work in Peru, there's a whole lot of other places um, that our district, actually our district clubs work in a number of different places around the globe. So we tell them where we want that money spent. That's how the money is spent, based on our request. Peace centers, I'm not gonna belabor that part again. Uh, disaster response, and so disaster response is an important factor for us to consider. Um, the, the numbers here reflect, <laughs> of course, uh, Ukraine. It does reflect earthquakes. In addition to that, we support an organization called Shelterbox. We have two people here from Shelterbox. And so those are the first responders or people that would go uh, to a disaster to provide um, support to people that are in need. Um, and then programs of scale. And so that's something relatively new. And for those of you that attended the grant certification webinar, you, we've talked about it. So there is a project called Programs of Scale. It's a project that was working with um, trying to uh, eradicate malaria and trying to educate um, healthcare workers to make sure that in fact malaria is eradicated. It was in Zambia. Uh, it is finished now, and on December 6th, I'm going to have an opportunity to listen to the outcome of that. And so I talked about stewardship earlier. So there's two areas here that I wanna make reference to. One is the Polio Plus program, and then the Zambia or the, the, the uh, uh, project of scale area, where the stewardship that we exercise over the money allows us to get partnerships that is going to significantly impact our ability to deal with whatever we wanna deal with. So eradicating polio at this stage is an extremely expensive proposition because of where we have to go to provide the vaccines, what we have to do, and what we have to do to continue to monitor. That $157 million didn't come from Rotarians by themselves. The 57 or 50 plus million dollars came from Rotarians. The other $100 million came from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. They are willing to, year after year, invest $100 million to help us eradicate polio because they know we're gonna take care of the money. The project for uh, the programs of scale, um, again, so Rotary put in $2 million and it shows just $2 million here. However, that was a $6 million project. So that project came $2 million from Rotary, $2 million from um, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and $2 million, see if I can actually pull that up a little bit. because I always get it right, World Vision, World Vision USA. I, I always want to say USAID and I thought, no, that's not right, I have to get it right. So it's from World Vision USA. But once again, we are able to form these partnerships that have had significant impact on the ground because we exercise the stewardship over the money that, that uh, we are being given. So in addition to that, um, I talked about the fact that all the money comes back, so whatever we contribute to the Rotary Foundation comes back, so it comes back in different forms. We can do global grant projects, and so it'll come from one area. $28 million was returned to districts all around the globe. Our district is a recipient of district funding, so everything we sent off comes back to us to allow us to do projects right here on the ground in the way that we choose, in the way that we direct. And so that's another way that the money's come back. What you've done with that money, so that's you in this room, this club, that has supported 
uh, students to allow them to go to for, uh, um, edu higher education. It went to uh, RILA, which is teaching kids leadership skills. It went to the uh, Hernaldo Beltran Junior kit, uh, School to refurbish their kitchen, to allow them to feed the children or, or be able to nourish the children better. The Rotary Peace Park, now Fred was telling me that you now have a peace vigil that's happening at the Rotary Peace Park. Yeah, I stopped going to it because there were people arguing about how it should be done and I didn't think that was very good. <laughs> But the Peace Park is there and you did contribute to it. If it's used for the right thing, then, then maybe we'll, we'll, we'll achieve peace at some point. <laughs> I think that's the goal, isn't it? Yeah. That's the goal. And of course, the NOW program, and I think many of you are familiar, many of you are volunteers at the NOW program, Nutrition on Weekends, where you actually provide food for those that don't have enough food to eat. And you've been doing that for a long time. So you have boots on the ground right here in your community. Your community recognizes you as people who want to work. M many of these projects are supported by the Rotary Foundation because you've got grant funding that's coming back to you to help you to leverage your money so that you don't have to fundraise $2,000 for a scholarship. You can fundraise $1,000 and get the other thousand from a Rotary grant. So it allows you to leverage those funds and allows you to do what you need to do and the things that you're passionate about. So. Those are the, the boots on the ground, things that happen right here. These would not happen, of course, without our continued support. So lots of different ways that we can support the Rotary Foundation. Um, every Rotarian every year is just a program where a Rotarian donates 100 US dollars every year consistently. And so that makes you every Rotarian every year, you'll get a pin, banner, those sorts of things. And so that's one way of doing it. Um, if you look at some of the numbers, you can see that I, I often have people say to me, well, I don't have $100 to give. We don't have to give $100. We, we each give the amount that we are able to give based on our current situation. And Rotary would never ask you for more. So if you look at the, the $25 to $50 contribution range, it contributed more than $5 million to the Rotary Foundation over the course of a year. So it doesn't take a whole lot to make a huge impact. We have a lot of Rotarians around the globe. So if we all give $25, it would be fantastic. We would certainly be able to uh, achieve a whole lot more. And I say that because if you look at 34% of rota Rotarians donated to the annual programs fund. So if we just take that to 68% at $25 to $50 per person, we would be $10 million to the Rotary Foundation, which allows us to do another program of scale or something else that we are passionate about around the globe moving forward. So that's one way of supporting the Rotary Foundation. Um, we talked about the sustaining members. Paul Harris Fellows. So Paul <coughs> Harris Fellows, Gord, what's a Paul Harris Fellow? Paul Harris Fellow is a if a person who donates $1,000 to the Rotary Foundation is a Paul Harris Fellow. Does it have to be done all at one time? No, it can be done over a number of years. $100 in the U.S. a year could take 10 years for you to, to get there or uh, something that you do over time. Yes. How else can you become a Paul Harris Fellow? Fred. Hi. Um being nominated by our, our Rotary Club to be an honorary Paul Harris. Thank you. So yes, so you can be a Paul Harris Fellow. Um, for every dollar that's contributed, there's a um, <coughs> corresponding unit or, or point that you get. And once you have a thousand points to spare, you can actually make someone else a Paul Harris Fellow without spending any money. So it can be done. I had an assistant at work who was not a Rotarian at the time, but she did more Rotary work than some Rotarians that I know. And so I gave her a Paul Harris Fellowship and it was the greatest, she, she was just beside herself because it was just fabulous. And so it can make other people feel very good and appreciated for the work that they put in. So it is there and it's available. Um, Paul Harris Society is where someone commits to making $1,000 US per year for 10 years. It's not for everyone. 
I happen to be fortunate enough to be able to do that. I am a Paul Harris Society member. Paul Harris Society members contribute about 20% of all the money that's donated to the annual programs fund. So it's an important part of the Rotary Group. And again, everyone helps in the way that they are able. And I'm grateful that I'm able to help in a different way. And we are appreciative of anyone that can help in any way at all. Clubs, of course, receive recognition too. So when each and every one of you contributes some amount, then you're going to have um, a year where your club has 100% foundation giving in your club. And that would be $25 per year for every, of every member of your club. And then you would receive a, an award. I'm really happy to say that our District 5550 this past year has received an award when our district governor Sonia was at her um, leadership training session in that we have 100% of our clubs in the district donating to the annual programs fund. So I think that's uh, very positive and I'm very proud of the clubs uh, in terms of what they've achieved in that respect. So it was very nice to have that. So let's take a look at your numbers and how you have supported the foundation over the last little bit. This might be a little bit hard to read, uh, but sort of looking at 22-23, so last year, $3,729. That's US dollars, not Canadian. So keep that in mind. Remember, all of that came back. I re you receive some of that back in your scholarships, in your RILA applications, projects that you work on, so you get that back. So that's always good. Good to know. You have been a strong support of the foundation over the years, and for that I thank you. I also want to show you something else, which I've been able to put together with the help of a couple of people from the club. I want to show you your impact last year around the globe, and I think this is really important. And I just modeled, and I'll show you the, the Rotary Global one in a minute, I just sort of, I got information from Fred, I got information from Gord, thank you, on the number of hours that you spend on a few of the projects. But I looked at, in addition to that, I looked at your club membership, and I thought you have eight honorary, 42 regular members, 42 regular members. I bet you those 42 regular members spend at least 50 hours a, a year in either attending meetings, committee meetings, planning a project, getting some stuff for your um, auction that you're gonna be doing, your rubber duck race, all the other things that you guys do, you spend probably much more. So that is a huge understatement of the volunteer hours that are actually spent by your club. But in looking at your volunteer hours, in looking at a combination of your NOW program and how much it costs, looking at the scholarships that you support, looking at the RILA students that you support, um, looking at all the different things that you do, about $170,000 last year. International, Gord gave me the numbers for what you're doing in Guatemala in terms of the Ripple Effect project, roughly $225,000. You fundraised and you've got donations of $4,000 or very close to $4,000 uh, in foundation donations. We just saw the $3,700 in US dollars on the screen. Your Polio Plus, in addition to that, was another $2,200. Um, district projects that you've undertaken, international projects that you've undertaken, and of course, disaster response, which is immeasurable um, and and I talk really about what's the impact of someone who has been in an earthquake and didn't have a home but now has some place to put their children to sleep what is the economic or financial impact of that you can't measure the benefit of something like that and so that those are things that are not here and I what you do matters and I wanted to make sure that we show this slide because what you do every year matters and that number is off and i know that you're at a million dollars for sure if not over in terms of your annual economic impact on your community around the globe and what you do so what you do matters and it's really important to continue to do that what we do globally by all of the clubs all around the globe also matters and so collectively, and I always say, the Rotary Foundation is my charity of choice. The Rotary Foundation is my charity of choice because 
without the Rotary Foundation, I can do my $1,000 contribution and I can support something for $1,000. But with the Rotary Foundation, I have an impact of between 3.5 and $5 billion around the globe every year. So if you think Rotary isn't needed or isn't something that needs to be there, that the foundation shouldn't be there to exercise the stewardship that it does, it matters, we matter. To the world it matters. And so it's important to make sure that we continue to be here and that we continue to do what we need to do. We continue to support the foundation to help us to do all the things that we need to do moving forward. How you can help um, is to participate, give, um, more importantly, tell people about the foundation. I'm gonna go back to this slide, use this slide. Go to the people that you want to support a project and say, here's our impact, here's our economic impact. Do you wanna be a part of this? And why wouldn't you wanna be a part of this? Use that. So use the tools that you have. Let other people know what your impact is. Let other people know that what we are capable of as a team together and then we can do much more moving forward. So different ways, of course, we can give Rotary Direct. Who's familiar with Rotary Direct? Okay, Clara, do you wanna talk about it? What's Rotary Direct? My understanding is, is um, you, you decide to give X amount every month, and so that, you, that automatically goes into uh, the Rotary Foundation. So you don't really have to remind yourself that um, that you should be giving that just right. that helps sustain the foundation. Great, thank you. Yes, that's exactly what it is. So as little as I think ten or twelve dollars Canadian is it can go through your bank account or it can go through your credit card. I choose credit card easier. It alerts me. Bank account gets messed up with everything else. Credit card, it's just there. That's the rotary thing. Okay, I have to pay for it. Not a big deal. Um, it, it's just an easy way to make sure that your donation gets done. If you wanna be a sustaining member and you wanna make sure you give the $100 US, your $12 a month from your bank account every month is gonna make sure that you get to that $100 US because it's gonna make um, allowance for the exchange rate as well. So those are ways that you can contribute um, and ways that you can make it work. And I wanna remind you again, the gifts of any size have a huge impact around the globe. Um, 60 cents for a polio vaccine. We'll start with that. And then if we go up to $50 for a water filtration system, $200 for some medical equipment. So it doesn't take thousands of dollars to make an impact on someone's life. And so gifts of any amount um, uh, matter. And I guess no matter how you choose to give, I hope that you'll join me in supporting the foundation. And I just want to play because I know that you are strong supporters and there are a lot of strong supporters in this room for the Rotary Foundation. So I just want to show you the version of the Rotary Foundation's. Um, thank you. Oh. 310 disaster it's better. response grants. Together, we are providing clean water and growing local economies, supporting education, and promoting peace. Supporting mothers and their children. Providing aid to the communities affected by disasters. And preventing diseases like polio. Last year, donors like you contributed more than $427 million to the Rotary Foundation. Because of you, together, we can do even more good. Thank you for your dedication to strengthening communities around the world. The Rotary Foundation. So thank you for your support um, in the past. In a world and thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here today. And I'm open for any questions that you might have. So which are the global grants in uh, Saskatchewan? That you so there's a literacy project that is taking place and it's on two reserves. And uh, they just started. We had a bit of a hiccup with it because um, of COVID. And so we were not able to get onto the reserves. Um, and so Nipawin 
uh, club is actually so just a very small how many members do they have Fred four. Uh, like four members that are actually running this it's it's amazing they wow. have accomplished so much so Cliff Rose who was one of the driving uh, forces behind it as well unfortunately he's uh, passed on before he could see it so uh, we and we'll the miss initial him. partner John is uh, 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 from uh, Guatemala they were so pleased wow. with all the stuff that Ripple yeah. Effect has done they wow. wanted to give back, so they, uh, they're the internet. <coughs> yeah. Wow. yeah. It's actually the Rotary Club of Vista Hermosa, and that, the, their past district governor was at our, our, our district conference in 2016 or 17. Uh, so, uh, yeah, he's a really good friend of ours, and he's really great at thinking outside the box and trying yeah. to have his club support other projects around the world. I think it's the first project that Guatemala has sponsored in like another country. Yeah. That's and, and it's so, great. So what are they, uh, uh, the club is going up there to read or they're sending books? No, they have material. So it's it's uh, it's not books, it's audio, audio, yeah, and they actually got the material. For, uh, uh, appropriate. And yeah. the other one? Or are they both? They're the both, both on the same, the two different reserves. Same project, two different right. reserves. <laughs> but a significant amount of dollars that's coming into the province to support them. A lot of work on, and you have to do the work at the front end to make sure your partnerships are solid, that you've got the, the connections with the people that you wanna work with um, on the reserve or any other project. It doesn't matter where we start a global grant or a global project. If it happens to be in Africa or Brazil or Venezuela, it doesn't matter where you do it, you have to make sure you've got solid partnerships. And I think Deb and Gord could certainly attest to that. Uh, the partnerships at the other end are critical to make sure that your project is gonna be successful. Yes. How many projects and international projects would come back to Canada? Is that the first one I heard of? So it's just starting. Uh, the year that we were approved, which is a couple of years ago now, there were six only in Canada. And I think that we just make the assumption that we can't do these projects locally. We can, we just have to have a sponsor club from a country out, somewhere outside of Canada, right? And so forming the bonds, forming the partnerships <laughs> is a really critical piece of it so that you've got the sponsorship from outside. I always thought of international as out, never in, so when I heard that other yeah. project. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Can I just clarify something? Um, Shelf Books doesn't get any any funding from the actual foundation. No, I know. Um, yeah, the, sorry. The, the um, disaster, the, there is a disaster uh, funding a part of the foundation, but that's not um, related to Shelf Books at all. I, and the reason for that is when Shelter Box has to respond, they have to do it quickly. And as we all know, we, we like the, the lovely accountability of, of grants, but there's, there's a very meticulous uh, procedure for, for preparing to, to send in. And with uh, disasters, um, health boxes realize that they have to react quickly and they couldn't go through that checklist. So that's why they're, they're two separate. Um, well, I can just add to what Claire is saying the shelter box. Rotary is a big supporter of Shelterbox, as you know, and internationally, Shelterbox has been working with Rotary International to allow us some of this, this funding, to get around this, this hurdle of the fact that we have to respond so quickly. There's these projects that are supported by uh, the foundation, it requires extensive time, and we have to get into set to this aspect yeah. right away. From our, my understanding, we're fairly close to that, to where the foundation will be able to support shelter parks directly. Great. Happy to hear that. And thank you for that clarification. So again, disaster response funds that you saw up on a screen. I wanted to mention shelter box because you do so much good and that has a global impact and that's really important. Uh, but the disaster response fund as well has come into place because there are people like you who say, we can't wait a year down the road to start to rebuild. We have to look after the people right here and now. So the disaster response fund that's in place right now has allowed us to do things like go to Ukraine, go to earthquakes right away, go to do different things. We work with the 
districts at the other end. They tell us what they need and that's how the disaster relief funds are actually allocated. Thank you.